Welcome back to FemFlex Friday. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the shocking truth about oversharing your social media with others. Today, we are gonna be having female bodybuilders speak out. Mm. So be sure to like, subscribe, and follow Olympia TV for all of our episodes today. I am with my co-hosts, Whitney Jones, yes. Linda Murray, and Wendy Fortino. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. All right, so ladies, Oof. This is something that is we see in our in our industry all the time. Yeah, over, <laughs> some people can really cross that line of oversharing, but we also have to as athletes. People are following us, so there's a lot of benefits along with cons. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, Wendy, I'm going to start with you. What are yeah. some benefits of oversharing social media? Mm -hmm. What have you What have you experienced? Yeah. Well, the term oversharing, I feel like it it sounds like a negative thing, but I will say when I first started my social media. I shared a lot. Like I would, you know, I would wake up in the morning and I would just say, hey, just woke up in the morning. And back then, because I mean, I think I started my Instagram account like in 2014. And that was the first time that, you know, selfies really started being a thing. Because I had a Facebook before that, but you know, we were, and I would wake up in the morning, I would like post my selfie and, and people were like, hey, I'm, you know, it was motivating and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I felt like it was really inspiring people and encouraging people and stuff like that. There weren't like filters and Photoshop and everything back then. Um, but I do feel like after a while, I think this happens to most people, you start getting burnt out of your own self. Yeah. You know, you start mm -hmm. feeling so wrapped up in this bubble that you need to almost like step away from it to re find yourself. And mm -hmm. I think that is one of the things that happens when you, you start off strong and it feels, it's so positive. You're getting this like positive feedback loop mm -hmm. and it goes and goes and goes and you feel so good about it. The dopamine hits. <laughs> and then once you start almost getting sick of yourself, I feel like it happens, you know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. can you guys relate? Does that make sense? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's, I mean, you have to, in my opinion, you have to show a side of you that's authentic. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. sharing your life helps you be authentic mm -hmm. and, and yeah. helps people relate to you. You know, yeah. sometimes people think we're these superheroes and we're just like everyone else mm -hmm. out there. You are, though. We just, no, I'm far, <laughs> far from. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they see us on a, a big stage, Olympia stage, mm -hmm. and we appear to be, you know, different than them. No, we get up, we take our kids to school, we go to our jobs each day. You know, it's, it's right. crazy. So you share to be relatable. Yeah. But... For me, I have very specific boundaries about where, you know, what I share in my personal life, if I'm yeah. dating, um, even with my kids. I love to show the side that I'm a mom. It's literally the largest part of my life. So I want to share that, but within certain realms. Like, right. I don't put everything out there. Yeah. So I think it helps you be authentic. Uh, because anytime it's like, oh my gosh, look, I'm in Aruba, and oh wow, look, yeah. I just got glam. It's you're yeah. living this lifestyle yeah. that like again kind of creates envy, mm -hmm. and you're like, look, we have bad days. Right. I have days I want to tear my hair out. Yeah. I have days I wake mm -hmm. up and I have a huge zit on my face, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So I don't need to show everything, but you need to show everything's not rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. So it's kind of allow it, it allows you to connect with your audience. Yeah, just on a real yeah. level. Yeah. Like, I am a real person. I am just like everyone else. Yeah, yeah I think it's like appropriate oversharing. So, like, yeah. I see, I'll notice uh, uh, an athlete, or let's say someone they're having a bad day, or in the hospital they're just having surgery, yeah. and then they post that they, you know, having surgery. You see them in the hospital, and I'm like, okay, cool. But then sometimes it's like they live in that place, yeah. and everything is every time I go to your channel, yeah. you're in the. It's kind of like that's gonna... to me. Too yeah. much, yeah. yeah. You know, yes, and there, and there, can, there can definitely be cross. But there's, there's definitely a lot of cons to it as yes. well. Oh yeah. Have you guys? So you all are business women in the yeah. industry. Do you feel like sharing a lot of your, uh, con, like a lot of about your lives has also helped your business at all? I do. I do. Mm -hmm. I um, really quick. I just want to go back <clears throat> to the last point because I had a, a thought too. I'm I'm like all about like getting my vibe and my energy just right, you know? Mm -hmm. And on one hand, I do feel like, you know, showing people our vulnerable side is good. But what I have noticed is that if I'm too vulnerable and I I, you know, expose too much of a side of me that 
is maybe not so positive. It's not just about that, you know, I'm, I'm helping people see that I'm real, but I notice that I start to like live with that energy and like, it's almost like having that mm-hmm. out there, mm-hmm. I, it starts affecting me more. It's yeah. almost like out of sight, out of mind sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like when I was mm-hmm. going through my thing with my skin, it was like, I remember that after I had kind of gotten over the, the hump, I needed to get it off my shoulders. I was, I felt like I was, I had all this bent up, you know, pain and agony that I had faced that I had not shared with anybody. And it was mostly about for myself to share it. So mm-hmm. I shared a photo of myself before and after, and it got so many likes and comments. Yeah. Yeah. But then after a while, I had to take it down just because it being out there was it was weird. It was like kind of like affecting me. Like yeah. I needed it out of, I, I put it out there. I got the feedback. I let people see the vulnerable side of me and then mm-hmm. I took it down. Isn't that funny how you'll have a post it's, that you w- maybe shared that was like very personal, but you yeah. look, but you look back at it and it's almost just like, uh, it bugs you. Yes. And it's you're just like, I want, I want that off. Yeah. yeah. So you go, you went back and you took it down. Yes. You found it. Yes. In, okay. But in terms of helping me with, with <clears> my business, um, yes and no. I think that, that, you know, when athletes, the incoming athletes, when they see somebody who has their, you know, shit together, they are more likely to, to you know, okay, if they have their shit together, they're going to be able to help me, right? right? But then there's also the flip side of that. Like, if they're real, then they're going to understand my struggles. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's a fine balance. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you want to mm-hmm. have a just mm-hmm. dance that line where you're exposing just enough to where they know, like, they can they can help me out, mm-hmm. but also have your shit together enough to where they don't go, God, I'm just mm-hmm. walking into a train wreck, and mm-hmm. how are they yeah. gonna help me? They don't have yeah. their self together, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I have a video for you guys to watch. Uh, what's your reaction after it? Okay. The very first video that I made was uh, this time last year. And a lot of you probably found your way here because of that. Uh, it was a video of my husband opening up his Christmas present. I had a handwritten copy of my father-in-law's chili recipe and I found it and had it engraved on a cutting board for my husband and it was incredible and it turned out great and my husband was so grateful um this is the video it's a cute idea Mm -hmm. um go check it out if you want to it's pinned to my profile but my point of making this video today is that it's making the rounds again And I have received hundreds, hundreds of messages from people who have lost their husband or their dad or their mom or their sister. And they just want to talk. And this is something that I'm passionate about. I love trying to help people. But the fact that we are afforded this platform to reach out to complete strangers and to try to find that connection Mm-hmm. especially this time of year when so many people are hurting. And we feel that loss so much more uh, intensely than I think we do at other times of year. It's just amazing to me that we have the ability to reach out to complete strangers. And I hope, I hope that it's helping. Mm. So, Wow. Yeah, it was a touching story. Are you trying mm-hmm. to make us cry this I'm early? I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. It was, we have it was a whole touching. show to do. When I when I watched her video, I was, I was like, it was it, it was touching. Mm-hmm. And I thought her, I what she, I, I personally thought what she did for her husband yeah. by get, taking his father's recipe that had passed mm-hmm. away and engraved it on a cutting board. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really sweet. Uh, that was really a sweet gift. Yeah, but yeah. I think that that's is. where it's appropriate. That's appropriate. Yeah. yeah, and so her point is that she shared some, and it was one of those videos that you probably don't even think is going to do be impactful. Mm-hmm. You know, she was just filming her husband open up this gift yeah. that she had given to him, but it touched a lot of people who are going through the you know loss, loss yeah. and and yeah. pain, and it 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 created this community, and she was able to talk to others. So. That's an example of how it can actually help strengthen Mm -hmm. your community and your audience. Totally. I know, like, with me and talking about loss, right? So, officially, I'm divorced, right? But congratulations. Thank you. Yes, yes, (laughs) yes. And it was a a three year process, right? But in the beginning, like, in the past, I would see others that would talk about personal situations. And so, yeah. like, divorce is like a loss, but, like, people are angry, and they're out there, and they're right. oversharing and telling all of their business in regards to the marriage, and he's cheating on me, right. and da 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 
And I always said I would never do anything like that. But yeah. I do remember feeling this urge at the time to be like, oh, I just want to put something out there. Yeah. But I made the decision to not to not do that. Right. Yeah. You know, and um, and I think it's going back to what Whitney said, Wendy said, is that I didn't want I made the decision to like uh, not share that information yeah. with yeah. everyone. It's you know, personal. even in my close yeah. friends and work and, yeah. you know, like I went yeah. through that process and it was something that I didn't want to yeah. continue to relive. And I mm-hmm. feel like when you when I if I had put it out there, yeah. then every show that I would go to, yeah. people yes. would have people something to come up yep. and yeah. say, How's things going? How's yeah. the divorce? And I'm yeah. like, Oh man, I don't I'm not thinking about that yes. right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, yes. so Yeah. And yeah. there's appropriate time where like you can mm-hmm. bring it up in this context because you're comfortable talking about it. Now it's in the past, mm-hmm. so it's That's not right. top of mind. Mm-hmm. It's not super yeah. relevant. You're like, that was so so many years ago. Yes. Yes, but when it was painful, it was challenging. This is a perfect way to take a break because we're going to be diving exactly into that next topic. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm going to grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. Welcome back to Femflex Friday. We are talking about the pros and cons of oversharing your social life with social media. Um, And now we're going to be talking a little bit about the cons and the downfalls of oversharing your personal life. So... (laughs) Um, I have a video for you ladies to watch okay. and then we can elaborate because there's a lot we want to talk about. I this know, part. I know. Yes. So much. <laughs> Why do people overshare on social media but don't confide in their friends in real life? Because they just want attention from strangers and they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, that was really hard. <laughs> I think that when you're an oversharer on Instagram, it's actually the opposite. Like you feel the masses, like telling like a mass amount of people mm-hmm. gets it out for you, yeah. but you're not actually getting it out to one person. Like, you're not so you're, trying to solve the problem. Right. You just want to be heard. You just want to be heard. That's why you mm-hmm. will never catch me crying on Instagram stories. There are two types of people. Criers on Instagram yes. and not criers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, how did I know that? Like, Drop the mic. <laughs> yes. So, um, <clears throat> oversharing. We see a lot of it sometimes yeah. in our industry. And I think, I personally think, I'll give my opinion and I'll, I'll let you guys talk about yeah. it too, but I think we we get so, it's almost like you're behind a curtain and you have mm-hmm. this audience and you lose you lose a lot of like intimate relationships yeah. you don't have many yeah. close friends mm-hmm. and so you look at some people look at their audience as like these are my friends and this is right. who I speak to yeah and they sometimes I see people share so much and yeah. it's like <laughs> and then it, it, it can backfire it can. Linda what what do you think <laughs> oh yeah definitely I feel I mean I think when I see especially I guess with our bodies yeah. um, I see women do some things and I'm like oh my Oh, that's like a whole different realm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like too much information. And yeah. as far as just um, being, we're comfortable with our bodies, yeah. but I see that, see posts like that. Yeah. And then I have to look at that person or see that person mm-hmm. at an event. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You have I a, kind of know. You kind of just look yeah, exactly yeah, down. Everything about you. I, yeah, I know everything. It's too much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Yeah, people. There have been YouTube uh, YouTube creators who have dealt with a lot of you know negative effects. You know, they've had like stalkers. People who mm. people feel like they know you when you share so much. And there are some YouTubers that do like day in the life vlogs, and they share every single day. And one mm. one thing that I've always wondered is like, if you get in the habit of sharing every single day, like start to finish, like this is how I wake up. This is how. 
do at some point you feel almost disconnected from the way that you actually yeah. live yeah. your day because you're you you're recording yourself so it's not really a, mm. a there's no way for it to be an actual authentic day because mm-hmm. you really are on camera I tried to do a, a, a vlog one time and I quit after my first try mm-hmm. because it felt it felt inauthentic even mm-hmm. though I was yeah. trying to be mm-hmm. authentic mm-hmm. and I was thinking about what if I got sucked into this world of doing vlogs mm-hmm. and I also feel mm-hmm. like when you share you have to assume that risk that people are going to have an opinion about your decisions. Yeah. And I feel that way when I post a workout video. I know that I'm doing this be- for the greater good. I want to help people, but I also know there's going to be people that are going to comment about my body and they're mm-hmm. going to they're going to probably try to tell me mm-hmm. I'm doing it wrong. And I take on that that risk because of the reward that comes after mm-hmm. it. But when you take on the risk of like sharing every single thing that you do, yeah. you're taking on a lot of risk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So criticism is a big side effect yeah. of mm-hmm. oversharing your you know you might be sharing something and you might not expect that kind of reaction um, have you ever I mean I think all of us maybe, I, maybe not all of us but I, I, I will admit I there has been a point in my life where I feel like I maybe have had overshared yeah mm-hmm. and I experienced criticism and then mm-hmm. you also have a loss of privacy yeah, yeah. Mm. that's where I think privacy it's, it's especially relationships that's where I mm-hmm. yeah. feel like yeah. I see it where you know, you see the photos mm-hmm. and the posts, and they're like, never been more in love. And they're like, <laughs> yes. oh my gosh, this is just over the top. Yes. And then two weeks later, they're, not- they're on camera. That, my, my, my. <laughs> like just <laughs> yes. blasting them. And then two weeks later, oh, we made up. It's mm-hmm. like, Jesus, this Can is a, a roller about coaster. That? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to know do you think that it is detrimental to a romantic relationship to overshare how happy you are together? I God, I would think so. I think so. I think you need to have that level of privacy, and you're not trying to exploit it. Like, mm-hmm. there's a difference mm-hmm. between showing pictures or you're having a good time, but when you're professing your love through mm-hmm. Instagram to that person, why don't you just say it to them in person? Mm-hmm. It probably has more the of an impact. Is not. That I great. have. I have yeah, a theory. I, I have a theory. I, I feel like if someone is is do, portraying that much going over the top. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're trying to tell themselves or trying to re, to Convincing. reassure yes. somebody else. I don't find that genuine at Well, at there's all. that yeah. one saying like, up, oh, you is, can feel the train wreck coming. It's, yeah. it's coming. like, because when it's mm-hmm. over the top. But that's the thing. Like, there's some people who, like I've seen even in our industry, who jump from relationship to relationship. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And they've met the love of their life. And mm-hmm. then the next year, and I'm like, okay, this is the eighth love of your eighth life since love. I've followed you. <laughs> yes. You know, you know, so it's like maybe just keep your relationships, <laughs> put out the rest, uh, other sides of your life. But if we're, uh, if this is a fitness personality, they don't need to know necessarily yeah. if you're married or who you're dating at the mm-hmm. moment. I think oversharing is done in the worst way when it comes to personal relationships. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we've yep. seen a lot of, especially this past year, there's been a few instances where there was oversharing. Yeah. And it can, it, like it, it can ruin people. Mm-hmm. Well, and yeah. a lot of girls too. I feel like we're way more emotional. Yeah. So it starts kind of making you look a little crazy when you're just blasting someone repeatedly. It's oh, like, yeah. okay, yeah. you broke up or this guy did you wrong. You're taking yourself down. You're like not that. the first person that this has ever happened to in the world. Yeah. So all right. you're trying to do is mm-hmm. make people hate them. Well, it's yeah. making you look bad. Right. Get control of yeah. your emotions. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really. Get it together, girl. <laughs> what is it, this Wendy? Isn't, this isn't like a romantic relationship thing, but there. this is something that I remember happening on YouTube. I remember there was a trainer. This kind of goes back to like you know the thing that I said I think is really bad for coaches to say that that you know you're gonna be working with them and then they hand you off to an assistant and don't let you know that that's gonna happen I remember there was a there was a a coach an online coach and he got blasted by his assistant who apparently was doing all like the texts for him with his clients and he had so Mm. many clients and apparently she didn't get paid what she wanted to get paid. Oh. So she posted like this YouTube video calling him out and she had receipts for it. And I mean, everybody was mm. like so into this story. The receipts. The receipts. <laughs> she had all the receipts for it. Uh-huh. And I remember like watching that, just my jaw dropped. And on one hand, of course, she made him look bad. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, she made herself look yes. bad. You can't really share, you can't really try to take some Someone down without right. taking yourself down. Without, you know? Yeah, you're not mm-hmm. ever going to look good bringing yeah. someone else down. Yeah, yeah. I did something kind of <laughs> not cool. I want to hear. Like that. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I did. 
I sure did. I, sure I did. Okay. No okay. Out. Yourself, Give us the tea. Let's I go. Give us the tea. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> so when my husband and I, We're like, when we first here, had that, that thing happen, like, uh, we know, like, it's going to be like, we're going to yeah. go separate ways. Yeah. <laughs> I had control of everything in our house. I had all the passwords. I had access to everything. <laughs> I knew absolutely everything. And so I was able to share <laughs> as if I, I was him. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so, share what was like? I had his social account, media? like out there in social media. Ooh. I put it out in the universe. This is what I'm doing and messing around. Yeah, I'm kind of already. I'm like telling all my information. That's hilarious. My, yeah, I did. And so it looked I like mean, it came from him. <laughs> so he was sharing. This is what happened, and this is the person that I'm doing it. La, 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 la. So wait, yeah. how, so how long did it yeah. take him to figure it out? Like a oh, minute it, or it, like? It, it happened very quickly because people that they saw it and they said oh my god so a couple people reached out to me to <laughs> like, did you know you're say, like oh, i had like, no idea because they didn't know what was going on okay between us so they knew something was like so awry. you something blasted was wrong. that i sure did <laughs> But you know what? I had a very serious moment. You're one Everybody, of those that we're talking had, about here. I yes, know, I did it. I flipped had. out. Yeah. But you know what? Here's the thing. Okay, <laughs> you're my girl, so I'm gonna. Yes. I, I have to. I have to back you up Thank a little you, bit please. here, because <laughs> I'm just gonna say that we all have that instinct in us. Right? Mm-hmm. What to be crazy? Are you? Yeah. What are you saying, we Wendy? We all have that instinct. <laughs> what are you saying? And when something when something happens to us and we get so angry, we want so bad for. Everybody to know yes. to be on your and side. We all, yes, we all we all cave into that weakness. And lucky for us, we all grew up without social media. So when we were probably our most immature, weakest selves, yeah. when we probably would have made more That's mistakes, we yeah. didn't we didn't have access to anything that could take yeah. us down. A tool mm-hmm. like that, yeah. Boy. But we yeah. all have that instinct in us, and so it, it's something that we all have to fight. It doesn't matter how you know how mature you are, how you know high up you think you are. It's like you. We are always faced with things that we want so bad, or like the thing that's the worst is when you know somebody says something about you that's not true, and you want to, and you want so bad to, you know, Mm -hmm. clear your name or whatever, Mm -hmm. and you have to just sit back and like watch, watch Mm -hmm. it. You know, if you if the person who's saying something about you, you know, it's not true. You know, they're eventually going to take themselves down, and you have to sit back patiently and watch it happen. Mm -hmm. And that takes so much, Mm -hmm. so much maturity, so much Mm -hmm. patience and so much tenacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard. But you you actually, Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is you're admitting it. You're like, I did something. I've had that urge. I mean, I've I've had had that urge. If if I have my buttons pushed Uh to that point Mm -hmm. by somebody, which is not, which is very rare. Yeah. I have been tempted to be like, I'm going to, Blast this yeah. guy. Yes. I think yes. it's just, it, like you said, you just want people on your side. You want to tell your mm-hmm. story. Right. Mm-hmm. It's hard to stay silent. Mm-hmm. It's hard to yeah. Yeah. take that position. But yeah, at least I you recognize it. And I did. Like, okay. I recognize that this is just not the way to go. And it's going to make me look bad. And I'm it's looking not your bad. Style. And it was not my style. And it yeah. didn't feel comfortable. But I had that moment and I did it. And I don't know if it's I really would you take now. it back. You're like, but- you got hacked, not by me, but by some <laughs> chat. Yeah, GPT. and I did it not as me, right? So AI, I was gotcha. oversharing through him. I was like, hey, guys, look, this is what I did. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty sneaky. That's good. I did it. I did it. Good. No matter what, your best friends are always going to have your back. Yes, thank so don't you. Don't worry. Thank you, yes. Wendy. Well, and we, 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 you we know you personally, yeah. and you're like this one of the sweetest women. Yes. Like the kind I would have never thought. That's yes. why I this, think it's hilarious. Yeah. 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 This guy must have pushed you to the point he did. of just been like, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we have to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about balancing okay. and give some suggestions for balancing. Are we going to be juggling? Okay. You can. We're All right. Yeah. <laughs> so come right back. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro 10. 
All right, welcome back to our episode of oversharing on social media. So we've talked a little bit about the benefits of oversharing, the cons of of oversharing. Now let's talk about how to balance the yin and yang and how to maintain a healthy platform. Mm -hmm. So um, the importance of uh, providing a professional image on (laughs) our platforms. Whitney, how have you done that? <laughs> well, <laughs> wait, professional? I don't think that defines me. No. <laughs> okay, um, Linda. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh God, we're like. I know. I go list. back to my situation. Yeah, I mean, I'm always that, guys. <laughs> I would <laughs> say though, I, I honestly, because like when you had asked earlier about like sharing, has it helped the, your own business? Yes. Yeah. I can say 100%. I mean, if you guys follow me on social media, I like to do tons of debauchery, ridiculous. I'm just a kid who's never grown up and still trying to figure out what I want to be. But the amount of response, the positive response I get, like the funny, goofy reels that Alex and I do, it's increased our business so much because people want to have fun. They want to laugh. And, you know, it's like... I do. I own five businesses, so I'm constantly busy. I can be professional if I yeah. have to be. Yeah. But um, I love to have fun. And so when it comes to clients who want to come out for choreography, clients who want training, mm-hmm. um, even getting members into the gym, it's amazing that yeah. people are just like, it's just mm-hmm. fun, the energy. Mm-hmm. So that's a side of my life that I didn't share forever. Mm-hmm. And people always said I was so serious, and I'm mm-hmm. far from. Yeah. Well, but so you, it's but you, you do a really great, uh, really great example of showing your personality, which is fun sure. and yeah. goofy, yes. and you like to have fun, but you also do it in a very tactful way. Yeah. Well, I think. I mean, I try to, but mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, there's, you look at what I put out on social media. There's business posts. There's, yeah. you know, motivational stuff. There's things related to Olympia, and then there's the mm-hmm. I love the donut. TikToks. The donut, the donut yeah. challenger. Oh, yeah. Like, not, like, I know she really loves donuts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And because at first I was like, no way with that. I know, no one that knows she, me. You know, but you find a way. Yes. So it's just showing the fun stuff, but also you've got to have that balance. Like I yeah. try when I do posts to make it an equal balance. Yeah. And not have t- complete debauchery for two straight weeks, which is yeah. in reality kind mm-hmm. of my life daily. <laughs> but it's just always fun. So yeah. I, it's, it's, but that's what I like about it. If it yeah. was too serious, you that's, know, something's well, that's wrong. Not, that's yeah. not you. And people would know that's not being genuine. Yes. Either. They're yeah. like, what happened to your goofy? Venus, where, what's going on in your life? Yeah. So. Well, I have a video for you guys about balancing out this whole topic. So, Nico, why don't you roll that for the ladies? Do you tend to overshare your emotions? For those that don't know me, my name is Steph, and I'm a psychologist here to break it down. In BPD, oversharing can be a really common feature. Let's talk about three reasons why people may overshare. Boundaries. Setting boundaries isn't something that we are born with. It is a learned behavior and needs to be taught as a young adult or child. So people who haven't had the luxury of being taught how to set boundaries may overshare. The second reason people with BPD may overshare is because they get excited when they connect with someone who is similar. Usually we connect in the form of having similar interests, similar pasts, and similar traumas essentially. So when we are interacting with someone, if they share something we've been through, such as a trauma, we want to keep sharing, especially if they have shared with us. This is called the norm of reciprocity. And it's when someone has disclosed something personal about themselves, we feel the need to disclose something personal back. And that may initially fuel a sense of bonding and connection. The third reason people with BPD may overshare is because they are also under the influence of substances. When people with or without oh, yeah. BPD drink or take yeah. substances, their judgment is inhibited and they are less cognitively mindful of what they are saying and oversharing. Want to know more about this topic? Let me know in the comments. Do you know what's... Uh, this is totally random, but I swear if anyone has an accent, I will pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> But know. if you just talk boring, regular English... Matt has his phone set so, to so Australian so you're saying, Me too! Me too! Does I me? love it! What yes. do you do? He has it's, his phone set to an Australian accent. Yeah, so oh, Siri and directions. Yeah. Go to the core park. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. so, so but anyways, I just love it. If you have an accent, overshare because we love it. No. <laughs> yes, but then it's I, okay. I have an interesting take on balancing because I the way that I find balance, and this may be a <coughs> to me, but maybe mm-hmm. somebody else, could this could help somebody. There are days when I get really excited about something that I really want to share and I'll go through like almost like a phase where I share a lot of stuff. 
I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. I go through periods where I don't necessarily have the same like motivation. Yeah. And I need to just kind of take a step away from it. And I dig like, out of sight, out of mind. And I just need that for my like I just need like a mental break. Part of it is like I don't necessarily want to have to like deal with all these energies that like are coming going out and coming in mm-hmm. because that affects my vibration. But then Mm -hmm. also, like, I don't, and I know I've said this before, but it's weird, like, I almost feel like I want to, I want to stay connected with who I am and who my true self. And sometimes I feel like I almost disconnect from myself and I get like, I overly like analyze myself and I, I feel like, I don't know, like if I get sick of myself or what, but I need to step away and kind of just be in my zen and find yeah. myself away from that. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's not ideal for like somebody who like uses my social media for my business because it does help and it fuels my business. So it, maybe it would help me more if I were more on top of it. But that's just how my I, my mental state stays. I think that's yeah. pretty normal too. Mm-hmm. Like there'll be yeah. times where I'm like, ooh, excited. I want to yeah. share and I'm mm-hmm. having fun and I'm like, I'm not afraid. Like, yeah. There's sometimes where I feel almost like intimate, like just kind of like not have the energy yeah. and just like, I don't really want to talk to mm-hmm. like the world right yeah. now. Um, and then I'll go through these phases of like sharing so a I'm lot. Normal. And then, yeah. no, I think yeah. it's normal. Yeah. I think it's normal. Mm-hmm. Well, even like I have my tradition of memes in the morning. Like yeah. that's how I start my day. I always post funny stuff. And there's days that I'm busy, right? Yeah. Yeah. You get up and you've just got to go. And if I ever miss memes in the morning, I always get some messages. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I just, I'm, I'm kind of busy. Yeah, but it's now. And so it do, it actually kind of plays in my mind like, uh-huh. oh my gosh, I didn't, I got to post one. Yeah. Like I just, yeah. And mm-hmm. it's like, but why? Like that started out as something fun that mm-hmm. I did to get me to laugh in the morning. And, yeah. But it's crazy how in tune, and then I'm going, who cares? Who cares if I don't post a story? Yeah. Who cares if I don't do this for a day or two? But then I realized that it's weird because I've opened up my mm-hmm. life where people are like, oh, are you okay? Did you have a bad morning? Like, what's mm-hmm. going on? I'm like, I yeah. don't know you, but okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's weird. I don't know how you truly can find a total balance yeah. with it and not think about it. But yeah. there's days that we're just really want to share and uh-huh. other days where you're yeah. either yeah. preoccupied or just don't care to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I know I've been considering doing like the the vlogging, right? Yeah. And watching I know a lot you said of vlogs. you were trying it out. Yeah, watching a lot of vlogging and I see these ladies like every day. Like mm-hmm. it's a consistent thing you put out there. I'm going to do weekly or monthly vlogs. What, yeah. kind of, what kind of Vlog. vlogs do you watch? Um, lately I've watched a lot on fashion. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, should be like a clothing haul. Yes, the yeah. clothing haul, Femflex which is clothing awesome. Haul. And that's where I'm trying to find out like where do I fit? Like who am I? Like what can I legit do Those are real and questions. put out there yeah. that will not like uh, infect or yes. interfere with my life. Yeah, yes. like for example, Which is I'm, being authentic, right? And so I love working out, and I work out consistently, like in the mornings here. And so, mm-hmm. but then I thought that's going to affect like my workouts. Yeah, like, I have to. That's be, your time. I can't be like focused on camera yeah. and lighting. And I think because I come from a place of more of perfection like yeah. meaning like the industry with the magazines and things right. it was mm-hmm. controlled yeah, right? yeah we can control what we put on social media you yeah. can make adjustments to that photo and i'm like well these people they're really like authentic yeah. and mm-hmm. but some of them they're taking showers yeah. and i'm yeah. like i'm not going <laughs> what kind there. of vlogs are you watching I'm, yeah they start out <laughs> you they, only they get up and they do showers <laughs> they go grocery shopping they come home they unpack what they've what yeah. they purchased. I always just feel like my, my, my it's my, kind of a lot. My to days me. are so monotonous. Yeah, like, like is it that exciting? I don't. I, I, but yeah. how do you know that people are doing that? Because you're sitting there watching it somehow. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's but like they keeping are, you engaged and you're watching this. Yeah, because you're yeah. waiting for something more exciting. And then I even ask than myself, than why am I watching? Your groceries out of and I even car. like, why? Why am I like really like yeah. watching this? <laughs> I have a thought. I have a thought. Okay, here's here's what I was thinking about is. Anything that you do in life has to have a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that when we go into social media, whatever we, however we want to present ourselves and our image and everything like that, it's like, I think that whatever fuels you 
is what is going to, you know, exude out into the way that you present mm-hmm. yourself. And one thing I've noticed and I've picked up on is I feel like, you know, when p- a lot of times when people overshare, they get stimulated by that dopamine. You know, when yeah. people, mm-hmm. people want to like follow them and like and da da da. Mm. And I think that we all, you know, innately have this, you know, narcissism in us mm-hmm. where we all get that <laughs> dopamine release yeah. when people are funneling into yeah. us. Yeah. And we almost have to, the balancing act is we have to reconnect with ourselves. You know, rather than feeling so fueled by, you know, that attention, reassess, like, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. My purpose is I want to have a platform that, like, where I can, you know, reach out to more people and I can share what I what I love to do. I can share my love and my passion with other people Mm -hmm. and I can bring people into my world. And, you know, once I start losing sight of that, because we all do, Mm -hmm. I mean, we all get fueled by that dopamine release. I mean, sure. That's why it's so addicting. It's addicting Mm -hmm. when you when people like flood into your, you know, in your comment section and stuff like that. We love that. It feels Mm -hmm. good. It makes us feel good. You know, it brings us back to when we were in middle school, high yeah. school, and yeah. being accepted. It's something yeah. you have to fight, mm-hmm. though, if you really are know your purpose. We have to go, okay, I'm stepping away from my purpose. Like, what am I really doing this for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm starting to go down the yeah. wrong path because <laughs> yeah. I'm fueled by the wrong things. So setting, so setting healthy boundaries yeah. and also being aware of your mental health, if it's starting to, like, mm-hmm. over-consume you yeah. and it's starting to stress you out. Like, the days that you don't want to post and you're like, I don't, I, I don't feel like it's genuine, I don't yeah. have the energy mm-hmm. for that, that's you just actually being aware of, like, your mental state and yeah. being like, mm-hmm. you know, I need some time for me. I'm going to call Linda for some advice on what I should post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. You got to make sure she's very lesson. creative. Great advice. I'm very creative. <laughs> Just give her your login and password. She'll take care of it. I'm very creative. Yeah. I have to make sure that like with you guys, like as far as like not oversharing, but like staying in my lane. Cause when we're like, you guys like, let's do the twerking. And I'm next thing you know, and I look you don't have to the post and I'm like, Oh my God. No, I would <laughs> Linda, your new knees. First you all, can't do that anymore. Stay in your lane, <laughs> Stay in your I have a bad influence. No more twerking comments. Okay. I will not request you didn't twerking. Tell us you had two knee replacements, okay? Yeah. <laughs> two <laughs> knee replacements. We would have, we would That's have. why she was against the handstand twerking. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Fine, I get it. Yes. I'll come up with better right. ideas. Right. I, I love mean. watching. Well, in my mind, I have a young mind. I, I am young, right? You are you very are young. young. You and, are and, found and, and I just want to get in the group. I'm like, yeah, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm serious. You guys, unfortunately, we have to end this episode. But for future episodes of Linda being young and youthful yeah. and us twerking, stay tuned. And please be sure to comment below. What do you think about oversharing? Yes, no, do you do it? Have you not done it? Does it bug you? Let us know. And what lessons have you learned? Did you do something like Linda? <laughs> We'll share with us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Yeah.